that um, the UK study about ranking harms, was that adjusted for the relative number of users? Because my feeling would be, given that everyone drinks alcohol, it's always going to be, even, you know, even if relatively it had slightly less harms, because there's so, everyone's using it, your sort of total harm is going to be always quite high. Um, I've actually got a bit of paper here which the decisions are made and it doesn't include the numbers. Oh. I'd have to say, say for cannabis for example, one of the things that would affect it would be the uh, interruption of international treaties and that would be harm to others. That is taken into consideration, which may be pushed it up a couple of notches. But alcohol, I have to say, doesn't come out well. Okay. <laughs> Um, there was a paper done recently uh, by um, uh, Doug Selman, who's the director of the National Addiction Centre up in Christchurch, and a couple of colleagues as well. And they assessed alcohol, they're part of a group called the uh, Expert Advisory Committee on Drugs, or one of the committees that, that advises the government on drug harms. And they specifically looked at alcohol as if that was to be classified as a drug. Uh, taking into consideration uh, all the harms associated with alcohol, which would affect it in the issues that you just raised there. And alcohol came out as a class B1 drug, just, just to give a comparison with cannabis. And I think now is a topical time to point out, like a lot of the, um, the health harms around cannabis, the thing that everybody comes back to is psychosis. Um, and like there's this increased risk of psychosis for a certain percentage of the population if they use cannabis heavily before a certain age. So that's what the argument is there. Alcohol, if you use a certain amount, will cause acute psychosis in every person who uses it every single time. So I just think it's important to bear that in mind. Um, Constable Real, you said that um, you previously, before becoming a police officer, um, smoked cannabis. Do you think that's indicative of all police officers? <laughs> <laughs> It's a democracy, isn't it, for me then to do this job? Uh, I agree. Uh, but, you know, you have to be of the people, by the people, for the people. Um, so, <laughs> I think, I would say yes, definitely. I hope not many still do, but um, I'm sure there will old be. old were you? I was 20. I was 20, yeah. And Before your, your brain, brain had fully formed. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at what I do for a living. <laughs> I do like men and women more. <laughs> more questions? Yes. Weren't you legal or something? Me? No, no. Sorry, what was it? Why would I do it? Weren't you legal or something? Why don't I legalize it? Yeah. Yeah, if I had the power, um, you know, there's so many things that you could do for, for the benefit of New Zealand. You could make third party insurance compulsory. You know, there's all these different things that you could keep waiting for the government. Well, I keep waiting for the government to do it, and none of it happens. I, I don't think it should be legalised. I really don't. I, I think there should be more restrictions on alcohol, if anything. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm getting older. I think they should raise the drinking age to 35. <laughs> Honestly, if you could, if you could limit the, the problems that alcohol causes, you could probably do away with three quarters of the police overnight. What about an adjustment to the prohibition laws to incorporate the medicinal use of the herb? Well, I'll write to the police minister. <laughs> I most uh, certainly will. I'm sure she's you? waiting to hear from Constable Real. And um, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of arguments. Certainly, I personally think medicinal use is not an issue. And, you know, I've heard recently that North Dunedin is a great place to smoke cannabis, but the community constable there is rapidly against it. I, don't, I really don't care if you're having a toke at home, okay, but if you start dealing it, and especially if you start dealing it to kids, then look out. And, and you know, recently, um, there's a paedophile in North Dunedin who's using kids to sell his dope. They take it to the high school. If they sell three tins, they get to keep two. You know, he's not just interested in the money, eh? And this, this is why people in my position don't like cannabis, because it, it, it's avenues for all sorts of criminality, and, and these kids are 13. But if it was decriminalized, would that change?
change? Well, I, I don't imagine they'd put 13 year old smoking it. It'd still be that. There's avenues for. Uh, but they wouldn't work for a pedophile, they'd get an employment contract. Oh. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's a, it's a very complex issue, isn't it? As I say. Aaron. Hey, Constable Real. Um, <laughs> you, uh, you take the line that it is harmful because it is illegal and the law is the law and we shouldn't question it, implying essentially that the law is a static thing, that it, uh, that it doesn't progress uh, through social movements, which we all know is um, untrue. I mean, if, if, if anyone thought that the law is the law and we shouldn't question it, I don't imagine they would have uh, shown up here today. Um, are you saying that we have been uh, culpable for the uh, perceived uh, drug problem, as you said, by even questioning it, by even having this debate in the first place? Can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> You're worried about the uh, the I think I think we all know cannabis is illegal. Okay, yeah. and whatever our thoughts on that, we, we know it's illegal, and therefore, if you get a conviction, well. You know, boo-hoo. Think if you break the law and you get caught, well, it's down to you. And, and, you know, listen to us. We're still arguing. Should it be legal? Shouldn't it? There's no consensus here. You know, I couldn't quote the paper, but as far as I'm aware, there's no demographic that advocates that it should be made legal. I, I know Abe's speaking about it very openly and whatnot, but, but as far as a per, uh, uh, percentages go, there's no um, mass movement to legalise cannabis. People just don't want it to happen. You know, we live in a democracy, don't we? And the majority of people don't want it legalised. Mm. Well, we have to California. <laughs> no, I mean, the law is an ass. Hey. And normally if you try and get the law to solve a social issue, you're cracking a walnut with a sledgehammer. You are. Well, what, what options are there? Isn't that what you're doing by enforcing prohibition? To a degree, yes, but what, what's the alternative? I, mean, I personally, I don't think cannabis is, is a positive. I don't. I think it should be um, minimized. This, this might be a good opportunity, Julian, because I'm the one who made that statement that North Dunedin's a really good place to smoke weed and the community constable's really against it. But I mean, like, you have to say on the face of it, okay, Dunedin, because of our student population, we have the highest per capita concentration of people under 35 of any urban center in New Zealand. Now, by virtue of that, we also have the highest concentration of cannabis users per capita of any urban center in New Zealand. Now, anyone who lives here knows that it's really hard to ever find any, but there are a lot of users here nonetheless, and maybe that's why, supply and demand. But um, the fact is, we have the highest concentration of cannabis users in North Dunedin. That's why we started calling it Dunsterdam. And I mean, what Julian said here today is, uh, you know, as reasonable and measured as anything I could ever hope to hear. But it is in contrast, uh, you know, to like an article that he wrote in the Star when he first came. And it is in contrast to the idea of someone assisting you with your other police inquiries and then saying you smell cannabis and busting them. I mean, that sort of sowing the seeds of distrust in the community means that all these cannabis users in North Dunedin are much less likely to ever assist police with their inquiries. And that sort of like widening schism is not what we want to see. Like, I come from the US. I'm actually, I immigrated to New Zealand from the US because of the militarized police state culture that was developing there. And I saw New Zealand as a sort of laid back, um, much more utopian society that was close knit. Everybody knows each other. But since I've come here, New Zealand has slid down that slippery slope. And under national, uh, you know, these discredited New York style policing models that they're trying to bring, this escalation of the drug war that they're trying to bring to New Zealand, that's been discredited in the States. They're moving away from that. They don't want it anymore. The social breakdown got so much that they couldn't even handle it. Um, and that's not what we want here. And I don't want to have to re-immigrate from here because the same problems you know, are developing here. Thank you.